Hey, I'm Rachel Blackmer. I'm one of the associate veterinarians here at South Point Animal Hospital. And we're going to talk about cooperative care today. And my goal is for at least a few of you to leave here excited about doing cooperative care with your own dogs. So, first up, what is it? And cooperative care is all about you and your dog having a good time, doing the things that you need to do every day, but your dog is a participant. Your dog is saying, I want to do that thing. You know, who doesn't say, I want my dog to love having his nails trimmed. I want my dog to love being brushed. I want my dog to love getting a bath. I want my dog to love everybody at the vet. And some of us are lucky enough to get dogs that have that born in them. They're just happy-go-lucky. They love to go see everybody at the vet. Some of them love to get bathed. And some of us really have to work at it. But this is what cooperative care is about. It's about saying, your dog's saying, yeah, I want to do that thing. Let's do that thing. Um, overall, the goal with cooperative care and what, what makes it so wonderful is that it builds a positive relationship between you and your dog. Any kind of training does that. But cooperative care you know, gives back in ways that are really important for us and our dogs. Uh, it's about making everyday life easier. And it's about having a fun time doing those nails instead of struggling. It's about enjoying having your teeth brushed instead of struggling. Um, and it's about enjoying going to the vet and going to the groomer. So how did I get interested in this? It's a kind of a, a little bit of an interesting story. So this is Pele. She is my now seven-year-old dog. She was 14 months old in this picture. And I was going to a rehab conference to, um, to learn about uh, rehab for, for dogs recovering from things like surgeries and injuries. And I really wanted to take Pele. And she was a puppy, and she was obnoxious, and she was wide open and busy all the time. She hardly ever sat still. And I loved that about her. I, I, I paid good money for that. I wanted that in my agility dog. But in my dog going to a three-day conference, that was a lot to ask, and the dogs who went to this conference had to be participants. They had to be willing to have other people put their hands on them. So, being who I am, I spent six weeks teaching my dog to put up with this. Not, and, and in the process, found out not only she put up with it, she loved it. I taught her to do her liner side trick. Um, it was called Pancake, and it's still one of her favorites. And I taught her to lie still watching a little pile of treats. And then I taught her to allow other people to touch her and move her body like is happening here. This is not me. This is me. It is, I spent the entire conference feeding her cookies. Um, and all through the conference, she was the dog everybody wanted to go and work with because she was so well behaved, unlike my little boy. Seeker, go get up. Get up. Lie down right there. Um, and so this got me into cooperative care because I found out not only could I teach her to put up with it, but in teaching her about it, she fell in love with it. And my life with her became, for that sort of thing, became much, much easier. And for all my friends at the vet clinic. Um, let's look at a couple of examples of the kinds of things that you can do with cooperative care. So this is a video from Zeus Spenceful. There are some folks in the Netherlands who work with uh, wildlife and uh, wildlife parks and, and help with behavioral issues and uh, cooperative care around the country, uh, around the world. And this is them working with a fur seal and doing a um, eye exam for her. And she is needs an ultrasound of her eye. So she's been taught to touch that bumper with her nose. So she'll do that underwater. An ultrasound can be done underwater. So this is going to touch directly on her eye. And she is, you know, clearly not just putting up with it, but she's our participant. She's saying, yeah, lie down some. And this has been taught through positive reinforcement. And we'll go over what that is and what's involved. And then this is a video from Zoo Knoxville. And with many of the zoo animals now, what they're doing is do achieving a lot of the um, 
husbandry behaviors and veterinary behaviors through cooperative care instead of through sedation, which is what we used to do you know, 20 or 30 years ago when I was interested in zoo medicine. We sedated everything. We, we knocked them all out, and we lost some of them that way. Now, what happens is they do everything through cooperative care. So this is a tiger who has been taught to raise up against the offense so that an exam can be done of his abdomen. And this is all taught, obviously, with positive reinforcement. And he's been taught to show his paws. And you'll see the, the trainer does a specific movement that tells the tiger what she wants. And then he gets a reward for it. And you know these are these are big animals, and they're dangerous animals. And we can train all of this with a back and forth conversation that everybody benefits from. Um, so, if we can do that with tigers, and giraffes, and hyenas, we can do it with dogs. So, this is Seeker. Seeker is related to my dog Pele. He's two years old. And when Seeker came to me, um, again. I, you know, got the dog that I want, which is, you know, a little bit of a high energy, high busy, all the time dog. And Seeker was not a fan of having anything done to his body that he didn't choose. So we had to build our conversation all the time. And things like toweling him off, he was like, oh no, you're not doing that. And now he's like, oh my towel, I love my towel, oh, give me my towel, I love it, love it, love it. And so this was built when he was a puppy um, through positive reinforcement. And he got to the point where he just loves talent. Same thing for any kind of exam. If I want to look in his ear, he's not a huge fan of that. I had to teach him that. I want to draw blood. I got to get him used to all the things related to drawing blood. And he's saying, yep, I'm, I am a participant. I'm going to do that. I'm into it. All right, buddy, you go get it. Okay, no, you're going to earn cookies later. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go get it. So, in general, this is what you're going to do. And every one of you can do this. I don't care if you've never trained your dog to do anything. You can do this. So, three keys. Stillness. I call them Zen skills. Targeting, so touching your body with parts of his body, your dog's body, and shaping behavior. That's teaching behavior in small increments. So we're going to go over each of these things. This is um, a friend's dog, and she and I were talking just the other day about how she can't get Mixie to be still. Um, he's just not that good at it because that her sport is all about movement. But she taught him to be still from a very young age just for photos. She's a photographer. And he is fantastic at it. My dog is not good at it because it is not something that we work on. Well, it's not my dog. Um, but Mixie is super at it. So let's talk about how we train a skill. So training a skill in general is going to be about having yummy rewards. So here I have Fresh Pet, which my dog loves. I've got um, freeze-dried uh, Stella and Chewy's, which is his highest, highest reinforcement value. And I've got freeze-dried beef liver, which he thinks is awesome. So coming to the vet clinic and being on camera for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes is hard work. So we're going to give him the high, high value stuff. We want to know what behavior we want to train. We want to train it in super small steps so that the dog is always successful. And every session is fun and short. And I'm just going to let him wander around in the hand. We're just going to have to deal with that. So. Let's talk about the Zen skills first. So this is River, who says um, Zen skills when it comes to peanut butter boards is not a thing. He says, I don't want that peanut butter. <laughs> so a couple of Zen skills that I really love. Um, Seeker's going to show these to you. So this is um, Deb Jones, who we'll talk about a little bit throughout this whole seminar, this whole uh, talk. Deb Jones is sort of one of the one of the people in this country uh, to go to for all things cooperative care. She's a fabulous trainer, has a great book and website. This is her dog, Zen, practicing Zen games. So there, there's food right here, and Zen is in avoiding going to that food until Deb sends it. So I'm going to have Seeker show you this skill. He says he needs a turn. So, stand. so my, one of my favorites is you got to wait. And uh, this one I use a lot when I want to do some 
um, some things away from his head, but I want him to keep looking there. I might come over here and do something with him. He's staring at those cookies until I say, okay. I'm not and, sure I understand. And then the other one I love is I'll use a bowl sometimes. This is the way I taught him his nail trims. And he loves this game. And he'll look at that, and I have his, have his foot, look at his nail, work, do his nail trim, and then say, dive. And he gets his cookies. So that's kind of what Zen skills look like. And there are a couple of things we can do. This is uh, Barb Wright's Sheltie with uh, a birthday cake. Dog, of course, it's dog-friendly birthday cake. Um, demonstrating how good dogs can be. Now, I'll bet you the vast majority of you have this skill with your dog at dinner time. So your dog is sitting, you put the food bowl down, your dog doesn't get to go to the food bowl until you say they can, right now. So, right now. Um, the first place I start this with my dogs is called Zen Hand. So I will have cookies in my hand. You can do this with little puppies. And the puppy is sitting right there. If the puppy comes toward the cookies, I close my hand. Puppy backs away, I open my hand. Puppy comes toward, I close my hand. Puppy backs away, I open my hand. Puppy sits and stares, I say, good puppy, and give a cookie. So that Zen hand is the first place I, I work with it. And once they get good at that, the cookies go to the ground. So that's my gotta wait. Once they get good at that, we start working with a bowl, and then we put it into all kinds of games. I use this to train my agility behaviors, and I certainly use it to train my cooperative care behaviors. Um, targeting. What we talked about, the targeting is a big, big um, tool in cooperative care. So the classic targeting is going to be a chin rest. I have taught Seeker for a long time. You know, I put my hand out in a certain way. He's going to put his, his chin on my hand. So that's what a chin rest looks like. I can do both hands and put my fingers over the top. So that's another type of targeting. One of the easy ones to teach, and I'll talk about how to teach this because a good place to start is a nose target. And then I do this as well because I'll do some things like looking in his mouth and I want a top of the nose target so I teach him to target there. And so those are all useful things to teach and that's kind of what targeting looks like. And so the nose target is the easiest one to teach. Again, if you've never taught this before and you have a puppy I guarantee you, if you do nothing but put your hand out, your puppy's going to sniff it. As soon as your puppy sniffs it, yes, and give a cookie. So your puppy sniffs it, yes, and give a cookie. Now, of course, Seeker knows this behavior, but I guarantee you, you go and do this with one of your dogs. If you feed food out of your hands ever, your dog's going to sniff your hand. And as long as you capture that moment and say yes and give a cookie, your dog is going to learn really quickly how to do a nose target. Um, there are different types of chin targets. This is a cupped hand chin target. It's the most common blank dog. It's hard to give a talk and manage your dog at the same time I'm finding. Huh. He says, I can look at me and I'll earn all the cookies. So this is Catelyn Primrose's uh, young dachshund uh, demonstrating a lovely cupped hand chin rest. The pillow towel version. Um, this is Tasha Shaw Burbick with her uh, Wheaton. And basically, you teach the dog, um, you take a folded towel. If your dog knows a chin rest already, this is a really easy thing to add. And the towel goes down. You can do your chin rest, slide your, your hand out, and your dog will really quickly learn the towel rest. The nice thing about this is that it's a really nice way to put eye medications in or ear medications. So it's a really good one to teach as well. Um, and the lap. The naked lap chin rest. Um, this is one that dogs usually teach us. So <laughs> this is a lovely Kelpie named Chili Bean. And I'll bet a lot of you have dogs that do this when you're watching TV, because when they do it, you pay attention to them. So this, these two we teach our dogs. This one, most of our dogs teach us. So how do you teach it? Um, the, the easiest way to do it for most people is if you're sitting watching TV and your dog puts his um, head in your lap, if you start to put your hand out, your dog is going to learn to put his head there if it, if it earns him rewards like attention or treats. 
So that's, that's the way I teach most of my dogs. You can also lure it. So if your dog really isn't doing it, you can use a cookie to lure them down and put your hand against their chin and work with it that way. Now, if any of you guys have specific requests for things that you want to know how to teach your dog, we, we can definitely make you a little video about how to do that. So just let us know. I'm going through these things really quickly um, because it's a short talk. but. Uh, but this, these are things that are certainly possible to, to, treat, to teach pretty easily. And shaping is another way to do it. And we'll talk a little bit more about shaping when we talk about behaviors in general. So this is where we use chin rest. So this is Finn. So when Finn was a teenager, he was very difficult to work with. He hated any kind of restraint. He, he did not like coming into the vet. We could feed him cookies. And I could do an exam from a distance. I could not touch him. I could not interact with him in any way where he felt even remotely trapped. So Finn's wonderful owner, Scott, and our trainer, Lynn, worked together really diligently every single week and worked on cooperative care with Finn. And he's gotten to the point now where he comes in for his annual wellness visits, and the entire thing is cooperative care. It's all done hands off in terms of restraint. There's no restraining. But it's all done like I'm going to show you in this video. Honey, you cannot have the cookies for free. Lie down. Go lie down. Good boy. Next time I'm bringing Pele. So, this is where we use a chin rest. So, Ben has been taught a chin rest. I'll use it several times in this video to do the behavior. So, Sierra is doing a chin rest while we're doing. This is um, called successive approximations. So, I'm pretending to give a vaccine. Sierra is rewarding each pretend vaccination, and then we'll give him an actual vaccine, but he's had several repetitions of the pretend vaccine and getting a cookie for it. And then there's the actual vaccine. And we do this every time we work with this dog. Even though he's trained, we do that because it, it rewards the behavior he already knows. So, we talked about shaping. The idea with shaping is great treats, you know what behavior you want, you do tiny little steps, short little sessions, and everything's successful along the way. And if you can train a borzoi to stand in a little box like that, you can definitely train your dog to get his teeth brushed. Um, so, I'm going to show you kind of the process of the shaping behavior through how we teach a dog to wear a muzzle. And in my opinion, every dog should know how to wear a muzzle. You know, my dog would never bite anybody, but I want him to wear, be able to wear a muzzle if he has to go to a clinic where I'm not there and he's scared or injured and he's painful, any dog with teeth can bite. So I want my dog to feel comfortable wearing a muzzle. In fact, I don't want him to just feel comfortable. I want him to want to wear the muzzle, right? Love your muzzle. He says, I love my muzzle. He loves this muzzle. And this is actually, a, I'm doing a blog post on this, so we'll, you'll, you'll see a detailed blog post about how to train this behavior. But quickly, this is the way the steps go. And this is any shaping behavior, you're gonna train tiny steps at a time. Each step I show you, I did for two or three sessions with him. So my first step is touch the muzzle, and then he gets a cookie. Just touch the muzzle, yes, he gets a cookie. Next step would be, can you touch the muzzle this way? Yes. Yes, little tiny touches. He's not putting his head all the way in, he's just touching the edge. Then I want him to put his head all the way in. This I'm using my chin rest right here. So he knows the chin rest. He's putting his head in his muzzle, and he's resting his muzzle on my chin because he's used to, and he's resting his chin on my palm because he's used to that. Happens to be in the muzzle. He's already been taught, you know, the muzzle's no threat. He loves it. Um, next is the nose goes in more. Then we ask for a little bit more duration without the straps ever becoming a thing. So I might do 10 or 12 small sessions before I ever even move the straps. So it's not about all of a sudden, it's not about all of a sudden getting the muzzle on and then feeding him for the muzzle being on. It's about teaching him that the whole process is safe and it's his choice. So then my next step is closing the strap. I'm not snapping it, I'm just closing it. Then he gets a cookie. The next step might be, he put, now he puts his own face in and then I close the strap and then I take the strap off and then give him a cookie. 
One of the steps that you might do, because if he's at a vet clinic and you're not with him and they don't do things this way, they might just put the muzzle on him. So I might just say, you know what, Some, this is sometimes going to happen to you. Yes. And I want him to feel okay with that. Next step would be building duration with the strap on and then teaching him to walk with it on. So I think that's a step that gets missed a lot is that um, standing with the muzzle on and walking with the muzzle on are two different things. And I had to do a whole couple of sessions with, with Seeker to teach him to walk with it on. It's like he, he couldn't walk with it. He could stand with it, but not walk with it. So I had to teach him that. So that's okay. So basic kind of overview about the way this works. We want stillness with our Zen skills. We want to teach targeting of various kinds. We want to learn to shape behavior. Once you do that, you're golden. You're off and running. You can do one or two, one or two behaviors to start, and then you are in, you're in good shape. You can, you can shape a whole lot of behaviors once you learn with the, with the early ones. Um, it becomes easier and easier each time you do something. And to this, all you do is you add behavior, the positions that your dog already knows. So sit is a big one for um, you know, the various things we're going to do at the back clinic. If we're going to draw blood from the jugular vein, I've not taught Seeker this. So this is something he's not experienced. So I want his, his, him sitting for this, because that's what we normally do. I want his chin up. He's used to that. Yes. And I'm not going to do anything more than that for the first couple of little reps, because I want him to understand this is, this is fair, right? We're going to be fair about this. Yes. And then I'm going to touch his neck. Yes. take my syringe. Now, I happen to have a syringe, but I'll tell you what, a pen is a fabulous stand-in. Just poke there with a thing. You do, and, and you can't probably see it, but I can feel it. When I used the thing, his chin wasn't as heavy in my hand. So he was saying, okay, you know what, that's new and I don't love it. Yes. And that time he had a normal chin rest. So those kinds of little pieces of information can tell you how your dog feels about what you're doing. So, what do we use the behaviors for? Okay, this is really cool. This is Gia. Gia is one of my absolute favorite patients, belongs to one of our nurses. And um, this is a pill. And I put this up here to remind me about this. So I just took a workshop lab with Kathy Sudeo, who is a fabulous trainer, uh, came from the marine mammal world, and does a lot of work with all kinds of different species, but does a lot of work with dogs these days. And she just taught a uh, webinar on teaching your dog to take a pill. So, I mean, it, it, this I've been doing this vet stuff for 25 plus years, and it has never even remotely occurred to me to teach my dog to take a pill voluntarily. I, you know, we sneak it in, we pill them, we do all these things, and it's just been occurring to me lately to teach my dog about pilling, so my dog understands what I'm going to do and is a participant. But this course was teaching the dog to eat a naked capsule, just an empty capsule. And it was amazing watching her process in her demonstrations about all the different dogs she was teaching this process to. Secret. My dog. So um, I started to teach it to my dogs. And basically, the capsules look like this. She starts with very, very tiny capsules. And it's she starts with the uh, with just showing it to the dog and teach, and she will start. I have no idea if she's going to do this because I'm because this is a brand new behavior. We're going to try. So she'll start with a cookie, a cookie. He says, "I'm on the roll of swallowing. Let's use our highest value cookies." And she shows them. This is not a cookie. It's okay. We're going to eat that. He says, "I'm not going to eat that." Yep. All right. And then right behind it, another cookie. So he swallowed the empty capsule. And that is, I mean, to me, that's just like, woo-wee, that was so exciting. So, I mean, you can even do that. So she showed a video of a elephant swallowing a three-inch capsule and teaching that elephant to swallow that capsule. That particular elephant had TB. And they had to, to treat that elephant with, I don't remember 
how many capsules a day. So they taught the elephant through positive reinforcement how to swallow capsules. It's very cool. Um, you can do this for any kind of those sorts of husbandry behaviors, obviously vet behaviors, and grooming behaviors. So, you know, husbandry, toweling, handling the feet, uh, putting an eye in eardrops, cleaning the ears, brushing the teeth. So we always want our clients to brush the teeth. So we want to be able to teach our dogs how to do that. We do have actually a um, how-to video on how to teach that. For veterinary visits, we want to teach our dogs restraint. Sometimes dogs get restrained, and this dog in particular, not a fan of restraint. So I had to teach him that whole process. I'm actually still in the process of teaching that because that whole hold me thing is scary for him. Um, teaching injections, teaching blood draws, looking in the eyes and ears is a big one. You know, looking in the eyes, that's scary. Looking in the eyes with a thing, that's scary. And that's something, you know, he's being taught that. Um, there is a fabulous group uh, called Cooperative Care with Deb Jones on Facebook. And she does a, um, she, there's now a Cooperative Care Certificate program where people can get titles in Cooperative Care. And a lot of people like to collect titles. Okay, I, I like that, so I'm, I'm doing that with my dogs. But it's also inspiration to teach our dogs. And Deb's process goes really nicely step by step through everything that we need to teach to have our dogs be good at the vet and for the groomer and for husbandry at home in reasonable steps. So it's worth looking into that. And she's in our resource section. We'll post that below the video. Um, and then of course grooming. Brushing, toweling, bathing, cleaning the ears, doing the nails. I know the nails is a big one for everybody. That's a, that is a big, big step. So. Deb Jones, again, has a lovely six-week course on Fenzy Dog Sports Academy. Again, we'll have it in the resources section um, on how to teach your dog to love nail trims. And many, many of the dogs that take that course have, are, uh, feel like they're, um, the owners feel like they're in remedial class because they hate it so much. And she does a really great job of helping people teach their dogs to love it. Um, so these are our resources. We have at southpointpets.com, that's our website, we've got a bunch of how-to videos on things and we're putting on in blogs all the time. I'll be writing a blog up about cooperative care. Fenzy Dog Sports Academy, they've got workshops, webinars, and courses. Uh, the pill-taking workshop that I told you about and the nail trimming workshop. And Deb Jones also has a cooperative care workshop all at dog, uh, Fenzy Dog Sports Academy. Canine In Focus is Deb Jones's blog, it's fabulous. And Zoo Spencerville, they have a bunch of amazing wild animal uh, videos, which I find really, really um, inspiring. So that is our talk. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you've got uh, questions or desires for uh, how-to videos, just go ahead and post, uh, post something on our Facebook page, and we'll see what we can get done for you. It was really nice chatting with you all today. Have a good day.